Okay, so Mishastic, Laura and Laura Wan. They're all things that transmit on various frequencies. The one that is license free and mostly used in the UK is it 868 MHz. So I thought we'd try and have a look, and I mean look at the signal rather than just looking at the messages. And it's a bit like fishing because they don't transmit constantly. To maximise the use of the band, because it's normally used for messaging for sensors, that's what LoRa is primarily about. Use a messaging system called NTQQ, or is it MQQT? Called MQTT, which is a messaging system for the Internet of Things devices. So basically, sensors talk to boards similar to Arduinos, ESP32s, Raspberry Pis. And they're able to transmit on this band to relay data. So, ignore MQTT for a minute, and there is a message. There were two there, or possibly one. So that is the signal. And it transmits it, and then it waits for a response. Now it's quite likely that it doesn't just focus on receive. There's the response from somebody else. Now you notice that's on a different frequency, and that's double pinged, triple pinged. So yeah, that's looking to get a response now from the first transmission. So it's pretty spontaneous, you've no idea when it's going to happen. But it sends a message and then it waits for an acknowledgement to come back. Now there's no guarantee that the two radios can see each other. That's why it gets a bit frustrating when you send a message and nobody responds. So it may do a retry later on. We, we've got to have patience for this thing. It's not like WhatsApp where you send a message and the person at the other end goes, oh yeah, I received that, send a message back, I've acknowledged it. So sometimes you'll see a message, ACK, come back, which is the acknowledgement that a signal has been received. Now, what I'm showing this to you on at the moment is a little helical antenna on an SDR Play RSPDX. It is, a, it is an 868 MHz antenna, but it's just sat on the desk. It's far from perfect. And this, this leads to the impatience of people uh, using Meshtastic. And the whole thing about this is people will switch it on and go, oh, there's nobody on, switch it off, and then they don't pick anything up. Well, you won't if you turned off. Turn it on, leave it on, and wait. Because your device will inevitably ping out and it'll show itself. Or if you just send the occasional message, you can send CQ, CQ. You can say, is there anybody out there? And just do that every couple of hours. Hello, I'm here. You know. Uh, and that'll log you in, into the whole Meshtastic mapping system that will show that when people look at the map that there is stuff going on in your area. And this is something I'm going to look at in a minute. I'll get an overlay. There's another message, really weak one. And I know they're hard to see. I can't get the gain turned up on the waterfall, unfortunately. The contrast, but it is there. And it's going to be one of those things. Okay, so here's my Heltec V3 whatever it is, for 868 megahertz. And what I've done is I've put it back in the original packing because I got let down with my order of a case and it was a rubbish case anyway. So I'll probably buy the Bender case at some point. But in the meantime, I wanted to get it all set up. Now I've tested the module, configured it all, it all works. So what I thought I'd do is I'll pop it back into the original packing and then with a bit of jiggery pokery, I, and I can't do this one-handed. I cut a notch in one side of the case for the antenna. And I cut one in the other side for the USB. And I can attach the battery. It will just fit in there. And that will close. So I'm going to set that up now. And I'll show you it working when it's connected to the antenna. Little note for you. Don't power these up without them being attached to the antenna. It is possible to blow the PA stage. I know it's only about 10 milliwatts or whatever, but you can still damage it if you've got a bad SWR on your antenna. 
While we're on the subject of the antenna, I got some great contacts up to 30 kilometres away just using the little twiglet thing that came with it. What I have got, and it's just thrown outside a window at the moment until I decide where to mount it, and it's on a two metre cable. The, re the reason it's only a two metre cable, it really isn't good to use long antenna cables at these frequencies. Every, every All the length is attenuating the signal and I should really go uh, smaller than this one. So I'll generally rig something up later but just for now I'm going to assemble the case and plug it in then I can show it you working. So here's my little setup working on its battery just to prove that it does. As I'm using it remote in the conservatory I'm not going to be staring at the screen all the time anyway. So you can see I've received a message already. Okay, so in the Mesh Testing app, if you click Debug Panel, you can see the message is coming in and actually see what data it's sending, what time it is, what signal strength is. And of course, as with everything, when you come to demonstrate it, it stops dead. <laughs> but uh, there you go, there's another one. So there's the messages coming in. So I think that's quite interesting. So there's all the messages that have been ongoing. There's people, some of which are revealing their location. And there's some of the successes I've had in the last 24 hours. Now these cover quite a large area, as up to Wakefield and down to Col Colville in Leicester and Tre Stoke on Trent. I know that guy was talking to him earlier. So there's some interesting stuff going on there. I oh, didn't know we could do layers on the map. No, you, no, you can't. Oh, well, if you want to, not quite sure what that's for. I assume it's just so you can get people set up. So I'm using the username East Midlands Mesh Tastic. East Mids Mesh Tastic. It's a bit slow this afternoon. At seven o'clock this morning, I was woke up. Uh, because my do not disturb went off at seven o'clock and my phone's going bidding, bidding, bidding. It was really interesting. So we can do quite a lot with this. It's just letting people get started with it and getting them familiar with it and understanding its limitations. There we go. There's a message coming in. So yeah, I'm going to have a look at this some more in a minute. So I'll show you some more stuff. Okay, so when I first got my little Heltec V3, the SP32. I just stuck it with its little built-in antenna. So I tried the antenna hanging outside a window and it did work. I, I was fine with that. And just as an experiment I've moved it here. So yeah okay it could be higher but I don't have a ladder. It could be on the end of a pole stuck up from the roof. Not likely because uh, I'm in a rented property I can only do so much. The problem is it's next to this HF antenna that I put up last month. So also, that's also going to uh, blast a whole 5 watts into it, so that should be interesting. I may have to move it, I'm just messing around at the moment. As you can see I've been making some logos for the, uh, the group and what have you, and also for this channel. So I have a lot of stuff to do, but I thought it would just, would just get the, the YouTube side of it started and get people commenting and sharing experiences. The Facebook group has been fantastic. So this is the Facebook group and I only started this th Thursday at work and we're just getting so many people now already showing us how they're experimenting. There's mobile users sticking stuff on street signs. Oh, it's just blowing my mind that we've got, you know, we've got like 25, 30 users in a couple of days. And we've also got a Reddit group as well. Nobody on the Reddit group yet, but I haven't promoted that. So I'll put some stuff on here to help people get started again. It's a learning curve. 
and you know everybody's experimenting I don't think anybody's got a 100% opinion so there's lots of radio amateurs on there as well now don't be put off by this these guys are experienced in matters of radio and electronics and for the, we're really you know willing to help you uh, and share information they're going to help the beginners don't be scared of them this is one thing I found out that you could generate your own maps based on your location so you generate your map and then you click on a location and it will calculate the line of sight view to it so if I go to this guy who was in uh, I'm damned if I can find Wakefield on a map without a bit of help but just for the sake of that Wathon Dern, you know, I'm going to be struggling to get there because there's all these peaks. But you will find other locations. And you can build your own map on here. This is the, the fun of it. 